How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week one still. We have a little bit of recruiting before we head into week two with our second road matchup of the year. Uh, on the road against Army? Maybe they come to play us? Yeah, on the road against the number 12 Black Knights of Army. Obviously, uh, we're looking to bounce back after getting slaughtered by the Gators. Uh, number one team in the country did us dirty 38 to 6. We did score a touchdown, just couldn't quite go for two, so... At least we have found the end zone on this season. And hopefully the recruits don't mind it too much. We have a lot of scouting to do. And then probably a lot of players to take off and a lot more players to put on. And then a lot more to scout. So this is going to be a long process. And I think I'll probably just hop back on with uh, busts and gems. So that this doesn't take up too much of your day. Well, right away, a bust for Andy Henderson. Guard goes down to a 64. That's not looking good for him. Another bust with the linebacker Melvin Paris. He goes down to a 65. And there's a big gem. Willie Hall, the guard, goes up to a 78 overall. Uh, his impact blocking and run blocking maybe could be a little bit better, but the 94 acceleration is pretty solid. And another bust with Roderick Purcell. He goes down to a 63. This is good for us getting experience, but not great for us uh, in trying to find good players. Another gem, finally. Another guard, also Taylor Outlaw. Goes up to a 74. Again, not the best run blocking, but at least his impact blocking uh, broke the 80 plane. And with the last guy in this batch of scouting, Chad Washington does go up to a 68 overall. All right, so now uh, we're just going to offer scholarships to players that we like that we're in the lead with early. See if maybe we can snag a insta commit or two. However, Andy Henderson, of course, is coming off the board. We don't take busts here. Uh, I guess maybe unless they're really good busts. Uh, but we'll offer a few scholarships to these players that we have the lead with just to hope that we can get lucky. Nothing. Wow. And then with the rest of our points this week, we're going to give them to players that we are close to having the lead with in the hopes that we can jump up, offer them a scholarship, and get the insta commit next week. Alrighty, well, that is going to be it for this first week of recruiting. Let's go ahead and advance to week two. I'm kind of hoping the Army won their first game if they played in week one so that they can be a higher ranked team because, well, now we need to beat better teams uh, to help ourselves jump back up in the rankings remember we started 45th in the country certainly we dropped after a pretty bad week one loss well that doesn't help us uh left guard willie hall and the middle linebacker cedric carroll insta commit to ohio state and georgia respectively army did not play a game so at least they didn't lose and they stay at number 12 in the country as a b minus team they are favored to win which shouldn't really surprise us now, the start of this week's recruiting, I am just going to remove any player that it doesn't seem like we'll be able to compete uh, based on bonus point differentials. So I'm going to kind of empty the board and then fill it back up with guys that hopefully we have a better chance at landing. All right. Well, now that I've done that, we have 14 more guys to scout. So it's going to be the same as last time. We'll just go through... Uh, see if we have any busts or gems in this batch and then i'll probably take off anybody who's really bad like eric jefferson evan Pryor is a gem plus five for the defensive tackle he looks pretty well rounded donnie boner here 65 overall he's not good uh but i'm not gonna take him off if we can if we can get boner <laughs> it's gonna be hard for other teams to beat us <laughs> And the last guy in this batch, a low lock cheese center, goes down to a 78 overall. If we had a chance to get him, that's going to be fantastic, though. Now, let's see if we can offer some more scholarships and maybe get some insta commits this week. But we're going to try to use that every opportunity that we get. Ryan rushing the tight end? No. No insta commits for us on this week. Christian Jackson, the number 10 defensive end in the country. Uh, we've gained a pretty big lead with already, so that's fantastic news for us. And that was conveniently all of our points used up. So uh, Fontenot earned Player of the Week as uh, apparently silver lining as we got obliterated. I wonder if that's a uh, Conference Player of the Week or NCAA Player of the Week. Yeah, uh, well, Ben Adams, the uh, Florida corner, two interceptions, two tackles, 
in the blowout win. He gets himself a, a player of the week. But if we go to the all big 10, well, Jeff Fontenot offensive and Troy Carter defensive. We also just might have been the only big 10 team to play a game. We dropped nine spots from 45th in the country down to 54th as we head into this one. So a win against a, a number 12 Army would be big. Army 81 overall with an 84 offense and a 78 defense. Seems a lot more beatable than Florida. Obviously not going to be super easy, uh, but we can hope for the best. Let's uh, let's throw in some team colors this week. Maybe the whiteout was uh, just what did us in. Army has some cool uniforms. The Tropic Lightning is going to be fun. Uh, oh man, this is going to be a, a tough decision. So I think what we do is probably go with that Tropic Lightning. Just throw on the alternate, let the Wolfhounds do their job, and we can try to get a win on the season. Top players for Army. Not too much better than us. 88 overall for the running back. They've got a good fullback and a good wide receiver, so their skill possessions on offense are the top. Not really similar for us. We have Durham Finch at that 84, but otherwise it's a punter in a corner. So their offense is supposed to be better than their defense. And it looks like from that, it will be. The question is going to be, can we stay healthy in this game? And can I avoid making mistakes? All right. So here we are. Mitchie Stadium. Can we get a win? Tails continues not to fail us this year. As uh, well, we elected to receive to start the game last week. I think that was a mistake, so we're going to kick this one off. And with a five-mile-an-hour headwind, Jones can put it near the goal line. That's not too bad. Oh, they muff the uh, the opening kickoff, pick it up, but that's going to allow us to keep them inside the 20-yard line. So the defense will have the opportunity to go to work first. We're going to be expecting a lot of triple option from these guys. They got us to jump. Motion the fullback out. They step back to throw, and yeah, that's my coverage. Expecting the run, stepped up to try to stop, and they find Alex Perry 23 yards downfield. I have a feeling that this Army offense is going to cause problems for my smooth brain, but I guess we'll see. Gonna just continue to call it runs. This one is an option. Quarterback keeps it, isn't able to get the pitch off, and only gets a yard on the play. And that's just how we're going to play this whole game. If they go in motion, we will try and fight against it. They do step back to throw here. Quarterback scrambling. Logan slows him down. We give up five yards to Sean Hagen, but it does bring up a third down. Army definitely showing that they're willing to throw the football. But hopefully we can slow them down just enough. This time stepping back. Corner route wasn't open. This one thrown and it's deflected away by Devin Royal. Had a chance maybe to get to the ball and pick it off. But we will take the stop. And the defense holds on their first out. And keeping the Black Knights uh, on the good side of the 50-yard line. They could fake this punt. But no, it's going to be kicked away. And it is definitely fieldable for Frank Blair. As he picks up a block and heading towards the sideline. Does a nice job cutting it inside. A 24-yard return there. So the offense comes out with great field position. Maurice Tate back in as the starter for this game. I'm not quite ready to sit him for Albert. Considering he got injured in the last game. Didn't have a chance to prove himself. And finally, for the first time, we see the strength of his running abilities. As he keeps it on the read option for 21. Having a dual threat quarterback is absolutely huge in this game. And it works out well there as we hand it off to Durham Finch up the middle. And that's good for another nine yards. See if we can keep this running attack going as we'll go with the triple option. Fontenot coming in motion will be the pitch man. And he's not going to get the pitch. Maurice having to keep it enough to get the first down. Maybe should have slid, but we'll let him take those hits. As long as it doesn't seem like he's about to get blown up, I'm fine with him uh, taking a little bit of contact. Now we'll step back to throw for the first pass of the game. This one over the middle. Give it to Zach Wilson. Make the catch and we'll get six yards. Those are just good for Maurice's confidence as he didn't throw too well to start in his first start. <laughs> that pass takes us to the 21 as Durham Finch will get the ball off tackle trying to get across the red zone across the 20 he breaks a tackle lowering the shoulder and he gets a first down on the play that felt like it should have been blown up for a loss of yards but instead 
He moves the chains and will step back, looking at the play action. Waiting, waiting. Right bumper is open. Just got to get the positive yard. Zach Wilson breaks a tackle, and it's a first and goal. Just like that. The strength from the offensive skill positions right now absolutely showing through. From the five-yard line now, a chance for the offense to take the lead. The first lead of the season, it could be. Durham Finch gets, gets a yard on the play. And I don't know if I'm going to allow Maurice to throw this close to the end zone. So we're going to keep handing the ball off. No blocking. Durham Finch just able, not even able to get back to the line of scrimmage. She's going to lose a couple of inches there. That's going to make it a third and goal. I got to say I'm a little bit worried, but we're going to go with the toss to Stan Williams. Out towards the edge, the blocking, holding, he cuts it north. Not enough to get into the end zone. Fourth and goal, inches away. And it's time for Smith to come in. And the first fullback dive of the season. Can he get in? Easily. Courtney Smith scores his first touchdown of the game. And of the season, I really should say, is we're going to take a 7-0 lead. That is fantastic news. If the defense can hold just one more time in this first half, we could be really on track for a good win. They would call it an upset. Yeah, I guess it would technically be, but I expect to win this game. So far, I don't see a reason to stray away from the man, except I'm going to bring good pressure on this first down. Kind of expecting a run. It is a uh, quarterback keeper. Kind of a counter. Royal misses the tackle. London having to chase him down. It'll be Whitaker slowing him down enough. No, broken tackles all over the place. A huge 48-yard run from Sean Hagen. That's on me for trying to hit stick the quarterback. That hurts. That hurts a whole lot. Fully expected that one to be uh, a run to the right. Expecting it again here. Quarterback steps back to throw in a little play action. He's got some blocking, and Alex Perry gets six yards. Well, the two times that I've brought pressure on this drive, it has not worked. So we're just going to avoid doing that. Expect them to run it. Quarterback keeps it, pitches it on the option, and it's enough for the first down inside the red zone. Honestly, besides me just completely missing the tackle, I'm more than happy with the way the defense has played so far as London gets a decent stop on first down. Just got to continue to hold as long as possible. This one to run towards the edge. They cut it up the middle, and it will be third and one. Uh, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to bring pressure. This will likely be the final play of the first quarter as I'm expecting a run. We'll see what we can do to stop it. They pitch it out to the edge. Great cut. Absolutely phenomenal cut. We had the edge sealed off, but Alex Perry takes it north and he takes it into the end zone. That's going to tie it up at 7-all. Well, I can attempt to return our first kick here, and this will end the first quarter. Frank Blair, I'm bringing it out of the end zone. You already know. Question is, can we get some blocks or make anybody miss? <laughs> the answer is no. Absolutely not. So... Kind of a bad note to end the first quarter on, but we came out looking strong. Offense scores on their one and only drive of the quarter, and the defense stopped Army once. Had chances to stop them a second time. I'm feeling confident. But offense will come out to start this drive looking to run. It looks like they might want to bring some pressure, but we're just going to hand it off anyways. Let Durham Finch pick up some yards and make the rest of the set of downs a little bit easier. I'm going to try not to cheese options too much this season, but since we have a running quarterback, it's definitely part of our arsenal. Running, pitching it out to Durham Finch. Man, both guys took a shot. All that worked for four yards, but it does move the chains. And we can step back to throw again as... A is just wide open, but I threw it off the back foot, so Zach Wilson kind of had to run back to the ball. I started to get worried about pressure, but we get the catch anyways. Take this opportunity on second down just to run it again. Durham Finch Jr. up the middle. Has some blocking. It's enough for the first down. And he gets six yards. He's having a good start to this game. Already six first downs in the game for us as we'll look to make it seven. Right here waiting. A open. It's Zach Wilson again making the catch and getting the first down across midfield. Maurice, 4 of 4 to start the game. All four passes have gone to the tight end, Zach Wilson. Who's not in on this play, so we'll see what the answer is. A was open. B might be open. We're just going to scramble, though. Didn't like that X stopped running across the field, so Maurice stays 4 of 4. 
And a play that was almost impossible last year with Albert at the helm comes to fruition there as we scramble for a big first down. Durham Finch pulled down before he can get a yard. That was a big play from Chris Scott. The Army defense doing a solid job on that one as we will step back again, looking to throw a couple of curl routes or over the middle, trying to throw Fontenot open and Jeff comes down with it inside the red zone. Tate showed some inaccuracy problems in that first game against Florida, but maybe has settled down now that he has some college football experience and he's just throwing really accurate balls right now. The Pope brought Stan Williams down for a loss of a yard on that play, and now Durham will come back in as we run to that left side of the field again, looking for some good blocking, and we have it. Durham Finch gets the first and goal, a favorable spot, I thought, but just like that, a chance to score again. That one gets us down to the seven, so a direct snap now to the man, Durham Finch. We'll see the blocking solid. He cuts it back in. Oh, he got a yard. I uh, thought there was more on the table, though. What if we try a little play action here inside the 10, stepping back to throw. Let's just go with the dump off. Give it to Stan Williams. Uh, again, just too short. Probably would have been more successful running. Maurice, 6-6, six six, but it's third and goal, five yards out of the end zone. What can we do to pick this one up? I'm looking for Durham Finch. I'll make sure that Wilson and Lane get a little bit deeper on those curls. And Durham Finch couldn't hold on to it. Maurice's first incompletion of the game, and it's fourth and goal. Hopefully this isn't the wrong decision, but we are just going to take the field goal. It's up and through, maybe a little bit further than right than I would have liked, but it does reestablish our lead. Three points in our favor as Jones will put this one into the end zone. Now with a tailwind. And Army going to take the touchback. All right. What can the defense do this time? I'm going to pretty much refuse to bring pressure. Option. Quarterback Garrett's rid of it. London can't get the tackle. Miller has to be the one to finalize it as they get six yards and take a timeout. The second quarter has gone by surprisingly fast. Two minutes left. Army a little bit worried about the clock. I'm going to expect them to pass. We're going to sit in the zone on this one. It is a play action. Quarterback kind of have to scramble. What a cut. What an absolute cut there. Shook me out of my boots. Shattered my ankles. Thought for sure he was going to try to go to the edge, but I guess I don't know the AI in this game well enough. So they get the first down. Quarterback throws a check down. More than fine with that. We'll just knock him down. Clock still moving. Important to remember here that we do get the ball to start the third quarter. So we're just... Totally fine. Not scoring again so long as we don't give up a touchdown. They will step back. I'm fine with that again. Just kind of playing it patient. They only get a yard and now it's third and seven. If we can manage to keep these guys here. Maybe we take a timeout. 20 seconds. Stepping back over the middle. A huge tackle, but John Baker holds on to it across midfield. Army's drive will stay alive there as Florida barely beat Mississippi State. So they'll stay Number one, that was a three-point win for them. Clock nearing one minute left in this half. Terrible throw. Army, you got to be a little bit more concerned about the time. There's the second timeout. Got to say, I don't think they're in fuel goal range yet. And they have that five-mile-an-hour wind going into their faces. So quarterback again steps back. He's going to scramble. Uh, first tackle broken. And now they're in field goal range. Sean Hagen breaking tackles all day long. Really smart of him, too, not to try to force any throws. I'm going to try to bring some pressure. See if we can ruin his day as the clock continues to run. He gets the pass off. London gets the tackle, but again, four yards gained as the clock will tick away. Still just going to bring this pressure. There's a good sack. That is going to help tremendously. It's third and 12 again with the clock moving. We'll definitely expect them to try and get this pass off. What can we do to stop it? Quarterback scrambling, Whitfield, diving tackle, misses. That's disaster. This quarterback is way too good at scrambling. 17 seconds left now. And I'll expect him to take off again. No, man open. They got to take a timeout here. Clock really ticking away. They're going to try to get another playoff. They want the touchdown. Four, three, two, one. They get the snap off. Quarterback could scramble for it. He's got a man wide open in the corner of the end zone. 
And just like that, as the clock expires on the first half, Army, perfect clock management, scores the touchdown to take a four-point lead as we're going to head into the half. Maybe we could block this? No, snapped it immediately. No time to get ready, so 14 nothing. We'll have the chance to retake the lead to start the third quarter, but as we go into the locker rooms for halftime... The number 12 team in the country finally has a lead in this game. We're going to hope to change things around, but man, we really got to stop this quarterback from scrambling. His cuts are just absolutely obliterating me. Uh, I mean, he's rushed for nearly 100 yards so far in the game. Unacceptable. Defense has to kind of dial it back in. Uh, and the offense, honestly, they're doing okay. Send Frank Blair back to return to open up this second half a much more fieldable kick just a yard deep in the end zone out towards the edge but the lack of blocking is concerning the spin move was atrocious this is the slowest spin move i've ever seen still a decent return i'm gonna be honest i don't think this is gonna work but we're gonna try a flea flicker anyways praying hoping for the best that's a sack <laughs> the blocking never had a chance i should have known with our offensive line that was never gonna work but i just wanted to try it so badly well, second and 15, we've dug ourselves a little bit of a hole here. We can get out of it with a good pass and a good catch. Eric Lane, or Brandon Lane, sorry. 18 yards, that's a first down. Maurice still having a good game passing the ball. Again, very accurate, throwing his guys open. I've been impressed. Albert not looking like he's going to steal the job anytime soon right now. Durham Finch there, good seven yards up the middle. And we're going to continue to allow the running backs to work. Stan Williams will get this carry on second and three. Good blocking. And it's enough for the first down. How about another handoff to Stan Williams up the middle? Just going to continue. Just run at guys. Lower the shoulders. See what we can get. That's a good four yards. And I think maybe a play action here could hit the spot. They're bringing some pressure outside the pocket. Something that teams didn't have to worry about last year. We'll just complete the catch. Take our eight yards in the first down. Surprisingly impressed, actually, with Maurice's uh, throwing ability on the run. They want to bring some pressure on that right side. Let's flip this play. Let's run it uh, where there aren't defenders. Well, it doesn't matter. Jerome Simmons just got popped in the backfield. Blocking was worthless there. I, I don't know if I read the name right, but I think the guy who tackled him was Cornelius Mayo. A little bit interesting. Let's just cut this one up the middle. Stan Williams, a huge carry. That'll oh put us over 100 on the day, and it's 16 for him on that individual attempt. Puts us in a great spot here. Already midway through the third quarter on this opening drive. So we'll step back. Another play action pass. Trying to wait. Needing to get outside the pocket. Tried to throw it away. But Maurice unable to release the ball in time. It's a huge sack. Kurt Pope with his second tackle for loss of the game. So, a long, long ways to go after the 13-yard sack. Stepping back on the boot. We'll see. Can we get outside the pocket and find anything? Nobody open. Time to throw. And we get hit as we're throwing. So, it's incomplete. Maurice took a shot, and he's going to be slow to get up. So, we will see Albert Johnson again. And this is not really the time that you wanted Albert to have to come in. Having to throw one up. Third and a mile, stepping back to throw, waiting, waiting. We'll just heave it up. That's triple coverage, and it's incomplete. Not much that could have been done there. Probably had a better uh, receiver option to throw to. Uh, two quarters Tate is out for. We're going to kick this ball away. Try to get some good field position with a little cough and corner. And hope for the best here. Kick. Oh, it's not great. It's not terrible either. Better than just giving them a touchback. We're going to keep Maurice in the game when the offense takes the field. But first, the defense has to get a stop. This drive will start for, um, from the 12 for Army. Is this an option? Uh, <laughs> that was a weird one. Seemed a little bit broken, but they lose a yard. That one's going to make it second and 11 from the 11 for Army. I'm expecting a pass. 100% on this play. No, a run out towards the edge. He cuts it back inside. And he's there to get tackled easily. Third and 10 now. The defense a chance for a three and out. Can we hold these guys on this play? Praying, hoping for the best quarterback. Throwing one deep. Blair! Oh, he dropped the pick. He would have had a chance at a good return, but just a good job deflecting it anyways. 
I am incredibly lucky. Uh, because the quarterback waits another second. The guy I was covering was wide open. I burned my, or I got burned on my assignment. But now, we can send Frank back to return this punt. And, well, at least we're across midfield. Maurice back in at QB. We will step back and throw with them immediately. We just got to be careful not to take any hits over the middle. Could be picked off, but Fontenot comes down with it. Oh, that was a good throw. Just barely avoided that middle linebacker. Only problem with that one is that Maurice took another hit. So we're just going to avoid that for a couple of plays here. Hand the ball off up the middle. Let the running backs try to put in a little bit of work. And we'll just continue to let the clock burn down here. We're in field goal range, but I don't know if a field goal would be the right decision as Stan Williams gets to the edge on the counter and almost gets a first down. It's third and one, and we have no reason not to be running this football. Giving it to Jerome Simmons. Not quite enough. Fourth and one, we're going for it. Army should know exactly what's coming, but they're not stacked up in the box. So I think Courtney Smith is going to have an easy time on this fourth down up the middle. Plenty of space, able to make a little bit of cut. And there's another first down for us Eagles. Cornelius Mayo, I was right, that is that guy's name. He makes the tackle. It's just a little bit too late as we'll step back to throw once again. A open. Got it to Zach Wilson for his fifth catch of the game, and he held on through the contact. That's going to be enough to end our third quarter. So now a second and five, I think inside the 10, threatening to take the lead once again as we will head into the fourth quarter. If the defense gets one more stop, it might be enough to win the game. But first, we have to score on this drive. All right, what can we do? Handing it off to Stan Williams on the first play of the quarter. Stan cuts it back inside. Third and inches. That's either a blessing or a curse. And we'll bring in Durham Finch for this play. Could be big. As you can see, uh, crowd getting to Maurice a little bit. Thank goodness we're not passing. Durham Finch up the middle. The blocking is beautiful. Not into the end zone. He is inches away. And for the third time so far in this game, we're going to see Courtney Smith with an opportunity on the fullback dive. Can he get in for his second touchdown of the game? There it is. Again, unstopped. Right now up two with a chance to take a three-point lead here in the fourth quarter. And the extra point was good. So Jones could put this one down and the defense knows what they have to deal with. Not a whole lot of time left in the game. Oh my gosh, just barely missed that guy with London. That would have been a huge stop. Instead, Army, normal field position on the drive. And again, we're just going to be playing to keep these guys slow. Even if they score a touchdown, we'll have time to at least tie it up. Throw over the middle is complete for 10 yards. And I'm very well aware that this has not worked so far in this game, but we're bringing pressure. Quarterback scrambling into the pocket. Almost made it out unscathed. We get him for the sack, though it's a loss of a yard. And it will be uh, second and 11 now for the defense to go against. This one a run out towards the edge. The blocking is incredible. And Roy Mason picks up the first down. I'm not sure there was anything that we could have done to stop that play. This one on first down, expecting it to be another run. Maybe they step back to throw, though. Taking a lot of time to get the playoff. It's an option out towards the edge. Quarterback keeps it. We just can't. We miss him. He can't. I don't know. Some sort of force field forces us to just run right past Sean Hagen. It's insane. That is disastrous. Army back inside the red zone. This quarterback... He, I just don't know what it is. We just run straight past him every time. This one, a throw over the middle. A little play action. It's complete for nine yards. This offense, you know, triple option with a little bit more passing involved. Kind of makes sense uh, how they were able to make the playoffs last year. First and goal. We cannot seem to stop these guys. Going to really have to sell out to stop them now. Any motion, we're calling it a run to that side. So, will it work? No. Hand it off. Maurice Brown into the end zone. Army retakes the lead. And with 326, we're going to need a touchdown if we want to have any chance as they make it four points. Really wish I could return this kick, but it's not the case. 21-17. Fieldable. Uh, I think that's Ron Johnson the third. He breaks a tackle, but it gets stuffed inside the 20. 
All right, I'm saying it right now. This is the final drive of the game. I don't really want to trust our defense. So, unless the offense gets obliterated like it looks like could happen here, we're just going to run the clock out. The big problem is that uh, Tate is getting rattled by the uh, by the stands. So we need to hope for the best. We need good blocking. We need the running backs to really shut the crowd up here. It's a third and five. We'll step back again, not knowing a couple of our uh, receivers' buttons to start the play. Throwing it, Williams. No, Jerome Simmons drops the ball, fourth and five. Well, that is disastrous. You guys might disagree with this, but I'm going to go for it. Uh, we can scramble with Maurice. Uh, but most importantly, we're just going to get outside the pocket and try to make something happen with his legs. Plenty of space to get it done. Plenty of space after the catch, and he holds on. No fumbles. 13-yard rush. The drive stays alive. That was absolutely a planned scramble. As there it is, the crowd has kind of shut up. And we'll have a chance to just run our offense on the play action. Waiting. Right bumper. Curtis comes down with it. A little bit of separation. That puts us across midfield with 216 on the clock. And I'm certainly not afraid to run the football, so we'll let Jerome Simmons take the carry on this one. 208 left in the game. Up the middle, nothing doing. Man, our blocking has not been good on the running here late in the game. Cornelius Mayo just continues to do some damage. Just once again, I'm looking for this route to the running back. Usually it's a surefire bet, but it just has not been completed. Let's give it to Zach Wilson. I know he's going to make the catch, and he gets the first down with a generous spot. All three of our timeouts with a minute and 35 left. I'm not worried about the clock just yet. We could get there soon. But if Jerome Simmons just takes it up the middle. Oh my gosh. Strong running from the third string back as he gets those 15 yards. John Lumpkin gets the tackle there. Shout out to anybody who knows what Lumpkin the pumpkin is. Minute and 23. We'll try the read option. Maurice needed a good block, and he doesn't get it. It's a loss of three. Again, the clock will be moving. And we're going to step back for a halfback slip screen. We'll see. I might just throw somewhere else. Or we can just turf it. Uh, that was a terribly designed screen because the running back never even attempted to get open. Felt like it had the opportunity to be great, but here we are. One of six on third downs in this game. Can we do anything? Stepping back to throw. I don't like it. We're going to try to force a throw. That's not who we threw it to, but Lane catches it anyways. I threw that to the A receiver in the middle of the field. A terribly inaccurate ball from Maurice Tate. Lane comes down with it, and we're into the end zone to take the lead. I swear to God I didn't press that button, but here it is. Up a field goal with 52 seconds left on the clock. Who knows? Maybe I fat-fingered it. If he was X, that could make some sense. Oh, defense, a chance to win the game for us now. Curious to see if this Army offense is willing to run the football. They do have all three of their timeouts, but any tackle inbounds could be really big for us. Quarterback scrambling outside the pocket. Again, I just missed. There's a broken tackle. We do get the tackle inbounds, and there's the first timeout taken. I just feel like I don't know how to play the game with uh, Hagen when he's back there. Can't get to this guy. First and 10 already near midfield. That's pretty disastrous. He is going to scramble here. That's a fumble. They recovered it. Logan kicked it right to an offensive lineman. So they stay alive. Having to take their second time out. That would have been the game almost certainly. But they stay alive for now. Second 11. Stepping back to throw. Hagen's going to scramble again. He's going to get sacked at the line of scrimmage. But with the clock moving, they can't take a timeout. 30 seconds left. We'll see if we can stop them. Quarterback steps back, throws, tackle is broken. It's a first down, and that'll stop the clock. That almost certainly would have been game over. Going to have to go into the zone here, run a cover three, try not to get burned deep. They step back. The curl over the middle is complete. Are they in field goal range with another first down? Defense is collapsing on this one. A sack would be huge. Force them to take the timeout, but this could be the final play of the game. Carter gets there, hits the quarterback. He completes it. And they take their final timeout with four seconds left. So the question is, can they make the field goal? It's not a long one, but they do have a little bit of wind coming straight at them. 
Kick is up. And it's good. Zeros on the clock. We're going to overtime. Well, that is disappointing. Can we win another coin toss with Tails? Well, we can. 3-3 three three to start the year there. We're going to obviously start on defense here. And I have no idea what we can do to stop this team. There's something about them. They're, they're so shifty, I can't make a tackle on them. Quarterback steps back. No, he hands it off. And up the middle, just nothing doing. Our defense is getting gashed every single play right now. Our best chance is to hope for some sort of turnover. How close were we to winning the game in regulation with that fumble? It really hurts. That's going to be a face mask as well. So a first and goal. Nothing going our way right now. Face Middle mask. linebacker Leon Logan gets called for it. And it'll be a first and goal at the five for Army as we're going to just start to bring some pressure. Trying to defend. That time we do stop him at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and goal. I'm just going to hope that the man coverage is enough. Because we're bringing pressure every single time here. This quarterback steps back to throw. It's a draw. One broken tackle. Two broken tackles. Nobody on this team able to bring down these Army running backs. And Army scores. No blocked extra point there. So 31 to 24. We need the touchdown. Tempted to go for two if we do manage to score. Jerome Simmons. That's a great carry on first down. For us, we're desperately trying to avoid starting the season 0-2. For them, they're trying to avoid the big home upset. Jerome Simmons, not enough for the first down. It'll be third and one. And again, we'll have to try and shut up the home fans here as we will hand it off to Jerome, hoping for the blocking. The blocking is good. It's first and goal. And a chance now for us to get into the end zone. This could be a huge risk. I'm looking to get outside the pocket but also looking to pass on first and goal. Stepping back, we see the first block. Why in the back of the end zone? Fontenot comes down with it. And pending the extra point, we're headed to second overtime. I don't trust the offense honestly enough to go for two. So we will take it to second overtime and see if the defense can stop them on their second opportunity. First though, can we score again? A field goal I don't think will be enough. Fontenot will be our pitch man. See if we can reward him here with a nice pitch. Should have... Uh, I can't risk that pitch. We should have handed it off. Just made the wrong read. I really just wanted to get out towards the edge. I know there's bigger play potential with the option pitch. Doesn't work out that time. Second and 14. They're going to bring pressure outside the pocket. Going to scramble for it. Is Tate fast enough? We had a blocker. The diving tackle, though. It's third and two. Maurice is fast, but not quite fast enough. As now we have to rely on the running game on this third down. The blocking is okay. Jerome sidesteps his way forward for the first and goal on the eight-yard carry. I'm going for it again. The triple option, if we make the right read, could be huge. Robinson will probably get the handoff. And yeah, they don't want to see Maurice run. So we hand it off. We get inside the five. Pat gets the four-yard pickup. And it's second and goal again. I'm just going to keep handing the ball off because it's been working. They're bringing pressure. Blocking is good. And we are a yard and a half away from scoring again. Accidentally called the wrong play, so we've kind of had an audible here. Pat Robinson, halfback dive on third and goal. The blocking, not good enough. I'm going for it. Courtney Smith has been successful on three fullback dives. Can he make it four? Fourth and goal into the end zone untouched. Third touchdown run of the day. And we'll continue to stay alive. Again, not going for two. We'll leave that for triple overtime if it's necessary. This is the defense's chance now to win the game for us. They started so strong. And that's going to be huge. A false start. Back him up five yards right at the beginning of the drive. We're going to bring pressure on this first and 15. Kind of expecting a run still. If we could do something, that would be huge. Johnson, Ron, you got to make that tackle. Miller brings him down. That would have been huge if Ron could have made it, but it's still second and 14, so I'll take it. 
Oh man, this season already being really difficult. We'll expect the pass on this one. Although I continue to guess these wrong, so expecting pass is probably going to be a run. It is a handoff. First tackle broken, and he almost broke the second one, somehow getting five yards. And just two more stops is what it's going to take. Third and nine. What can we do? Got to watch out for the scramble, but they're going to step back to pass. We hit the quarterback, but he had the curl route wide open. Still not down. It's first and goal for Antoine Rodriguez. That is brutal because we are about to get the sack. Zone coverage over the middle there. Just not aggressive enough. So it's another first and goal. We'll see what they can do here. Four plays to get the stop. Quarterback keeps it, cuts it upfield, takes a hit, but gains three yards. And again, I just don't know what to do. Expecting runs, but where are they going to come from? They step back to pass. Quarterback scrambling, takes a hit, and gets sacked for a loss of one third and goal. And we've once again tied the record for uh, sacks in a game. We tied it last week as well. I think it might have been Carter both times. Though it might have been Rawls, the first attempt. Third and goal, stepping back to throw. I left my man open. Over the middle, it's intercepted! And that's going to end the game. Frank Blair, a huge turnover, will win it in the double overtime. 38-31. to 31. Sean Hagen, really his first misstep of the game. And Frank Blair wins it for us. Absolutely huge. He had a chance to do the same earlier in the game and win it. But he makes the most of it now. An ESPN Classic game. Courtney Smith is player of the game with the three rushing touchdowns on some beautiful fullback dives. We complete the upset on the road to move to one and one. And that is going to help tremendously with our ranking, which in turn will help tremendously with bringing in new recruits. Oh, that is so big. Way to battle back. And eventually the defense gets another stop and it could not have come at a better time. What an insane way to win it. Army rushed for 210 yards on us. We could not bring them down. But it's the one turnover is somehow we held on to the ball the whole time. And honestly, they should have had more turnovers. Frank Blair should have had a pick late in the game that should have sealed it. They had a fumble that we should have recovered that we just kicked straight to an offensive line that should have sealed it. So we had our opportunities. We couldn't make them stick for a while. But finally, in the end of double overtime, we do manage to win it. 38-31. to 31. Again, Courtney Smith offensive and just overall player of the game. With Troy Carter and his three sacks tying the school record as the defensive player of the game. It's the number 12 team falling as the start of our incredibly difficult schedule sees us one and one and we can advance the week towards another ranked matchup on the road to start our conference play against Minnesota. The same team that we were able to upend in the Dukes Mayo Bowl. They're going to be wanting revenge, especially because now that it's a conference game early in the season, it honestly has a lot more writing on it. We do get a bunch more XP, which is nice. Uh, no issue with recruits. Nobody else committed elsewhere, which is really good for us. Minnesota wins their first game. They move up a spot to number 19, which will give us a chance for back-to-back -to -back top 20 wins on the road. And after last week's victory, we have moved up to be ranked 34th in the country. Started 45, went to 54. Now we move up 20 spots to 34. A win here. Maybe there's a chance we're receiving votes, if not being ranked outright. Minnesota will be favored to win. They have a really good offense. Uh, defense not as hot. I'm a little bit worried. It seems like their defense did really well in their first game, but I got to imagine an FCS team. Uh, that's us. Uh, Southern Miss, 27-3. That's a really good win. Uh, Southern Miss might not be the best team, but they went uh, and they, they did their job. So we'll hope for the best here as unfortunately that will be the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like the video if you haven't already uh, and subscribe if you're not already as well. Both of those things, again, do a tremendous job in helping this channel grow. And once you've done both of those, uh, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself uh and then down in the comments i'm curious to know your guys' predictions for this upcoming game against minnesota all that being said though thank you guys so much for watching my name is goonmaster you guys are the gray boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later
Adios.